as you may have gathered, I'm still very critical of spiritual types. But I don't see a problem with people just simply living out their lives and their own life choices. I've made that clear in the past too. But what you often find with people who are easily offended when you criticise one of their gurus or one of their teachings, something which might well be detrimental, they try and generalise it. It's a lot easier to generalise something and then say, well, you're just against everyone or everyone who isn't like you. You're a bigot. You would put people into camps. You're no better than the, uh, the Chinese Communist Party or you're no better than uh, Hitler or Stalin or whatever the case may be. And the short answer is no. They just simply do that because it's easier than actually standing for what you believe and honestly debating what you claim. If a person really wants to convince you of something, they should be able to do it without simply attacking you as an individual, attacking what you supposedly believe, or defending themselves by, well, basically claiming they are the mouthpiece of an entire wing of society, or wing of spirituality or religion. Because generalisation is not the way of defending or proposing or even, well, anything really, attacking anything. Generalisation is not very helpful unless you wish to, um, well, wax the philosophical, basically. If you wish to uh, simply add to the philosophical view that, oh well, this idea, that idea, that is good, that is bad. These are general ideas that we would share because we do not wish to talk about specifics because the general point is valid regardless of specific points. Well, that's all very good. You know, it's quite reasonable, at least in my opinion, probably because I'm doing that right now. But basically... You don't need to um, be specific when you're talking about a broad series of ideas, a broad philosophy, whatever the case may be. But if you're defending specific points and ideas, things that are fundamental to what you've expressed, things that you believe, then the worst thing you can do if you are trying to protect that or trying to support that is to then generalise and not support your position. You would rather go, well... Uh, you're criticising a, a Christian, a very specific Christian or Christian sect, and therefore you're against all Christians or all religions. Uh, the same with spiritual people. Um, you're critical of a particular spiritual teaching or guru. Uh, you must be dead set against, uh, horrifically so, horribly against, um, everyone who has a particular belief uh, in some form of spirituality, whether they're religious or not, whether they belong to a spiritual movement or not, or follow a guru or simply follow themselves, you must be dead set against them because, oh, you're critical of certain individuals who've abused their position of power. So um, the lie there is obvious, isn't it? It's clear that if you suddenly uh, move the goalposts whenever you prefer or shift things wherever you prefer, you're basically not prepared to defend your actual beliefs. I don't believe a situation should be, you have to be all in or nothing. It's black or white. Is it a good belief or is it a bad belief? Well, it may have this, oh yes, this could be considered in some ways by some people to be a bad thing. But over here we have all these wonderful things, all these wonderful ideas, and therefore you should basically be accepting it as a positive belief because the vast, vast majority of ideas involved are very good, very nice, very cuddly, very sweet. You know, and if you like your candy and spice and all things nice, well, that's all good for you. But it doesn't take away from the bitterness, which is also within. And that's the very real problem. And you could dig a little bit deeper into some beliefs, which are considered to be quite nasty, and they have some pleasant ideas, things that are a little bit sweet. But I think understanding these ideas is important, and understanding isn't simply ignoring things you disagree with, things you don't like. It's about really questioning why certain ideas are accepted. If a positive belief has many, many great characteristics, many good characteristics, but there are some which are not so pleasant, shouldn't we look into why those ideas are included? And from there, you're able to perhaps improve the belief by taking out some of the less reasonable characteristics? Seems logical to me. And therefore, criticism in some ways, you know, it's a form of uh, troubleshooting, I suppose. It's a good way of improving a thing, which is a belief. But some beliefs, oh, well, um, it, it was put forward by these great philosophers historically, or put forward by this great guru or a person who claimed to be a prophet. 
for God or the universe or the aliens or whatever the case may be. And as a result, you can't really change stuff without stepping on someone's shoes. You know, you cannot actually come to some people and some beliefs and give honest and fair criticism without them taking offense because they believe that the beliefs involved came from something greater than man or greater than human, man, woman, or whatever you wish to call yourself. So from that view, any form of criticism is something to be rejected, especially if you have it as a fundamental part, perhaps a foundation for how you view the world.